medallions humming. Place of power, it's gotta be. Come on, Roach. Bad time. Not at all. Hand me the beggar tickets, the red bloom. Well, well, one versed in herbs. Probably saying too much, but I know a bit. For instance, that beggar takes poisonous. In large doses, small ones soothe pain and bring forth pleasant dreams. Which is all I can hope to do for her. Griffin, do that to her. Delina. Yes, attacked her at night. She was walking in the woods. At night? Through the woods? In wartime? Meeting a boy. The young, you know, do foolish things for love. Wounds are healing, but she will die. Blood's pooling in her skull. Nothing my bruise can do to help. Could try to help her with one of my potions. Swallow can heal internal hemorrhages. But? Witcher's potions aren't for humans. She'll die as it is. Yes. A peaceful death soothed by your concoctions. If I give her a swallow and something goes wrong, the whole village will hear her screams. I understand. Do as you will. Looking for buckthorn. Know if it grows anywhere around here? Hmm. Bottom of the river, where the channel's widest. But you do know that once out of the water... It'll stink worse than a weak old carcass. Counting on it. I'm hunting the griffin. Need the buck the one for bait. I was thinking. A few years ago we had trouble. Drowners under the bridge. A whole village had to pitch in for a witcher. Who now can afford the bounty on a griffin's head? Captain Peter Sar something something. Ah, oh, good to know the black one's looking out for our welfare. Nilfgaard values one thing, order. Griffin's disturbing that. It's gotta go. Yes. First I'll tend to the monsters, then to the folk. Not from here, are you? A lot of bitterness in you. Too much for someone who spent her life in a hut in the middle of nowhere. True. And you're in a hurry. Elsewise, you'd not use bait, just wait for the griffin to attack again. Believe we could have an interesting conversation. Maybe next time.
yes. Got any herbs you're willing to sell? I'm sure I can find something. Tell me something about yourself. What's your story? A sad one. Do you know the Temple of Melitale in Alanda? Do I know it? Can't remember how many times I've been there, how many times Mother Nenica stitched me up. We must have missed each other. I started to become a healer under Mother Nenica. Hmm. I was but 18 when they took me in. An age at which teaching was interest one far less than love. There was a boy, Goslath. He'd bare his chest to work. The novices couldn't keep their eyes off him, tripped over their own feet, dropped things. I left the temple for him. We passed a lovely summer together, and then he left. Nenake refused to take me back. My parents uttered not a word, gave me a travel cloak and a small coin pouch. I struggled long to find a place where I'd feel safe, needed, until I finally arrived here. End of story. Farewell. Come on. Let's go. Your key, ma'am? No, not me key. Me pan. It's always sat there empty, this hurt. That is, till the night afore the battle. A man arrived, walked right in like to his own. Was standing at me window, peering at the goings on. He must have been me. Cause next I knew, there he was, coming my way. Grabbed me pan for protection, see? But he just asks all polite. Gran, got any birch bark by chance? Lilac berries or even a few coals? Nay, says I. And you must be right daft to pester folk at night with such foolery. Listening, just staring at me pan like a magpie at a copper. Lend it to me, Gran. I'll give it back come morn. Baffled, what's he doing, frying in the dark? But I've got a soft heart, so I gave it to him. Interesting. What happened then? A four dawn. Another rode up to the hut. But come morn, only the first fella left. Locked the door, hopped on his horse. And that were all I saw of him, and me pan. T'were old, black with soot, not worth much, I suppose. But I've no other. Would you help me, dearie? Bring an old widow or a pan. I could never break down that door myself. And in truth, 
I'm afeard to go in any road. Such a stench wafting out. Methinks the other fellow. Well, but he's lying there. Never taken on a pan contract. Fine, I'll go in, look around. You should wait here, just in case. Nothing, nothing. Documents, almost entirely burnt. A few pieces still legible. This frying pan. Hmm. Scrubbed clean. Looks like the mystery man didn't need the pan so much as the soot off it to make ink write letters. Here, your frying pan. Mine? But mine were black with soot. And I could see myself in this sun if I wanted. But them years are past. It was the soot the man needed. He scraped it off to make ink. Must have had an urgent letter to write. Urgently burned some other documents too. And... And the other fellow? Dead. Round up a few boys and bury him outside the village. Deep, so the necrophages don't dig him up. And take my advice. Don't mention this to the Nilf Guardians. Hang about! You've earned a token of thanks. Here, Sonny, for the road. Fry up a nice white fish for supper. Or a pipe. 